Beta thalassemia is a genetic disorder where there's a deficiency in production of the beta globin chains of hemoglobin, which are the oxygen carrying proteins in red blood cells, or RBCs for short. Beta thalassemia is most commonly seen in Mediterranean, African, and Southeast Asian populations. Normally, hemoglobin is made up of four globin chains, each bound to a heme group. There are four major globin chain types, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. These four globin chains combine in different ways to give rise to the different kinds of hemoglobin. First, there's hemoglobin F, or HBF, where F stands for fetal hemoglobin, and that's made up of two alpha globin and two gamma globin chains. Hemoglobin A, or HBA, the major adult hemoglobin form is made up of two alpha globin and two beta globin chains. Finally, hemoglobin A2, or HbA2, accounts for a small fraction of adult hemoglobin in the blood, and it's made up of two alpha globin and two delta globin chains. With beta thalassemia, there's either a partial or complete beta globin chain deficiency due to a point mutation, which is when a single nucleotide in DNA is replaced by another nucleotide in the beta globin gene present on chromosome 11. And most often, these mutations occur in two regions of the gene called the promoter sequences and splice sites, which affects the way the mRNA is read. The result is either reduced or completely absent beta globin chain synthesis. And since this is an autosomal recessive disease, two mutated copies of this gene, one from each parent, are needed to develop the disease. If the person has just one mutated gene that codes for either a reduced production or absent production of beta globin chains, then they have beta thalassemia minor. If the person has two mutated genes that code for reduced beta globin chain synthesis, then they're said to have beta thalassemia intermedia. If the person has two beta zero mutations, then no beta globin chains are produced, and they're said to have beta thalassemia major. When there's a beta globin chain deficiency, free alpha chains accumulate within red blood cells, and they clump together to form intracellular inclusions, which damage the red blood cell's cell membrane. This causes hemolysis, or red blood cell breakdown in the bone marrow, or extravascular hemolysis, where red blood cells are destroyed by macrophages in the spleen. Hemolysis causes hemoglobin to spill out directly into the plasma, where heme is recycled into iron and unconjugated bilirubin. Over time, the excess unconjugated bilirubin leads to jaundice, and excess iron deposits leads to secondary hemochromatosis. At the same time, hemolysis leads to hypoxia, because there are fewer red blood cells to carry oxygen to organs and tissues. And a consequence of hypoxia is that it signals the bone marrow and extramedullary tissues like the liver and spleen to increase red blood cell production, which may cause bone marrow containing bones, like those in the skull and face, as well as the liver and spleen, to enlarge. Okay, now beta thalassemia minor is usually asymptomatic. On the other hand, with beta thalassemia major, symptoms do not develop until the first three to six months of life. That's because during the first three to six months of life, fetal hemoglobin is still produced. And that process uses up some of the free alpha chains. Common beta thalassemia major signs and symptoms include symptoms of anemia like pallor, shortness of breath, and easy fatigability, jaundice, swollen abdomen due to an enlarged liver and spleen, hepatosplenomegaly, and growth retardation. Complications due to hemochromatosis include arrhythmias, pericarditis, cirrhosis, hypothyroidism, and diabetes mellitus. Other beta thalassemia major findings may include enlarged forehead and cheekbones, which is called chipmunk facies. On a skull x-ray, the skull bones show a radiolucent bone marrow with fine hair-like projections that look a bit how the hair on your arms stand up when you get the goosebumps, so it's called hair-on-end appearance. Alternatively, this is also called a crew-cut appearance, named after the type of haircut. Diagnosis of beta thalassemia usually begins with a routine blood test that shows a low hemoglobin level, decreased mean corpuscular volume, or MCV, and a high red blood cell distribution width, or RDW, which indicates that the red blood cells come in a lot of different sizes. However, the RDW is often normal with beta thalassemia minor. The peripheral blood smear shows microcytic, or small, and hypochromic, or pale, red blood cells. There are also target cells, which are small red blood cells that look like bullseyes due to scrunching up of the excess cell membrane. Lab work may also show high serum iron, high ferritin, 
and a high transferrin saturation level. Finally, the diagnosis is confirmed with hemoglobin electrophoresis, which shows low amounts of HbA, but an increase in HbF and HbA2 levels, which are formed when excess alpha chains start binding to gamma and delta chains. In beta thalassemia minor, there's usually an increased HbA2 level, greater than 3.5% on gel electrophoresis. Beta thalassemia minor usually doesn't require any treatment. Depending on hemoglobin levels, treatment of anemia in beta thalassemia major, and sometimes intermedia, includes periodic blood transfusions. But keep in mind that regular blood transfusions add up to iron overload, which can worsen hemochromatosis. To prevent this, iron chelating agents, like deferoxamine, are given, which trap some of the excess iron and sweep it away through feces or urine. Finally, a splenectomy can be done when splenomegaly causes excess hemolysis. All right, as a quick recap, beta thalassemia is an autosomal recessive disorder caused by a mutation in the beta globin gene present on chromosome 11, which results in reduced or completely absent beta globin chain synthesis. There are three types, beta thalassemia minor, intermedia, and major. Beta thalassemia major causes chipmunk facies, hair on end appearance on a skull x-ray, hepatosplenomegaly, jaundice, and secondary hemochromatosis.